Hello everyone, my name is R and welcome to the 28th devlog of my base building game, Chambers of Devious Design. Let's get started right away. So first of all, one thing I did was add character sounds to the rest of the characters also. So previously I only had a few of the character sounds in the game, so now they all have voices. Then another thing I did was add this like small start animation to kind of underline uh, what the player needs to do. So of course you can also read it at the top right corner, but I felt like yeah I should somehow emphasize that what needs to be done in any any given match. And then similarly, the other thing I did was add this like end screen, or well, I had the end screen, but <laughs> add some of these stats here. So many players, I'm sure, are curious like what contributed to their victory or how did the AI win over them and things like that. So this this might be interesting to look at, and I can also quite easily add new. <clears throat> stats here if I need to, but but yeah, I figured this this should do at least <laughs> for the start. Another thing I spent time on was adding the achievements to the game, and so for that I needed to make the code adjustments and then also create these images and the Steam backend configurations for each achievement. And by the way, if you're curious how to add achievements to your game. I do have a video about that on my channel, so go check it out if you're interested. One unfortunate thing I had to do in the last two weeks was delay the release of my game. Previously my plan was to release the game on quarter two of this year and actually more specifically in April, but if you have a look at the calendar recently it's already May so that obviously didn't didn't quite work out yeah it's actually quite hard to estimate how long finishing a game actually takes even though I have done it once before and I think I have gotten better at estimating it clearly is still kind of difficult it's annoying to miss your own schedule but for me it's not really that dramatic because I'm working for myself and and yeah I <laughs> rather finish the game and release it in a state that I'm happy with rather than have to finish it completely broken and then like endure the negativity from players and have to fix it later on so yeah I'll keep delaying it until it's complete but I'm Fairly certain that the new release date of quarter 3 is, is very realistic. Then a few smaller tasks I did. Uh, first of all, I went back and actually read the feedback I got from the demo I had in the Steam Next Fest. So yeah, I had been putting that off for a bit since I was... To be honest, I was kind of worried about what the feedback might say. if. Everyone of us bashing my game and I had lots of things to fix because of that. But uh, luckily that was not the case. It was actually very positive. Many people were excited about the game and said that they were going to buy it on release. So that was really nice. And there were like many great suggestions also for kind of like what could be improved. And, and yeah, they were very nice improvements. I thought nothing like crazy and a few bug bug reports also so so yeah it was it was very nice to <laughs> finally go through that feedback and then what I did I actually went through my tasks list I kind of like reorganized it a bit removed all the unnecessary stuff I had lying around and yeah then I checked so most of the text in my game to make sure they are sensible and related to that I also tried to fix any spelling errors and make sure the like key 
terminology in the game is at least fairly <laughs> consistent. It's maybe not always, but most of the time. And then the final thing I did was kind of like uh, check if I had any tasks that had something to do with the text in the game, and then I did those. And what all of this is leading up to is that I wanted to start the localization process. The localization has actually been one of my kind of like <laughs> mental milestones for this game for a long time. It has caused it being kind of like this big looming thing in the horizon that I need to do and I know that will take time but I haven't been able to start it because I was still working on all the like text in the game and I figured that as long as those might change it doesn't make sense to start the localization but I did all the small things I mentioned and I kind of like figured that okay I think I won't make much changes anymore to the text. There might be like small adjustments, adjustments like that's kind of like just uh, realistic that something might need to be changed. But otherwise, I felt like this was the right moment to start the localization, and I'm really happy that I was able to do that. Now it somehow feels like I have like not that much left to do. I mean, I do have a lot of things to do. The polishing can take a surprisingly long time, but yeah, it. once I have the localization out of the way, I feel like I don't have any like these big things left to do in the game, so so yeah, that's, that's very exciting. Oh, and by the way, one thing I needed to do before I could start the localization was think about the pluralization of my texts and that was kind of an annoying thing. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's just basically that different languages have different ways of handling uh, plural words. So for example, one issue I had that uh, in the game I'm in many places talking about score and in English it's very elegant kind of. Uh, you can have one score, two score, three score, four score, but in other languages it's not quite so simple. Uh, the word doesn't actually stay the same. In order to tackle that issue I had to make some changes, but luckily I was able to change my text so that I think there's only a few lines in my game that actually need some consideration for the pluralization. And one of those is actually this turns left string here. So, so yeah, in English it's two turns left and then one turn left, and then at the end it might say zero turns left. So yeah, I actually created my own little uh, own little script for handling that. I'm using the i2 localization asset, but I think the pluralization in that asset is not handled that well, so I decided it was easier to make my own little gadget for that. And basically how I handle it is that in the localization file I have this like kind of tags for the uh, translators, like there's tag like one and then another tag many. And basically when my script knows the number, like if we are talking about 0, 1 or 500 or <laughs> something like that, uh, it just then detects the right tag in the localization string and then just extracts the like specific portion for that tag only. So yeah, it's not actually very complicated at all, it's quite a simple script. But with that I can handle the few few lines I have in the game that need need some consideration regarding that. And it's kind of annoying that I still need to spend quite a bit of time thinking this through and configuring the text and in the end the 
the effects are not that big. I mean, I, as I said, I only have a few lines in the game that actually need this. But with that out of the way, I was now actually ready to start contacting translators. I'm happy to say that actually now I think I have pretty much all of the translations under work. In the end, I ended up with something like 10,000 words that need to be translated. I think something like, was it uh, 3,000 for the game itself, then maybe something like 500 for some uh, miscellaneous stuff like uh, the Steam store page, some marketing stuff, and yeah, then achievements, those can also be localized. And then the biggest portion, which funnily enough is probably the least important for my game, is the dialogue, and that was something like 6,000 words that need to be translated. Overall, if I count it correctly, the localization will cost me something like 5,500 euros. So it's easily the biggest cost in my game. Otherwise this would be kind of cheap game to make, but yeah. But of course it's all subjective. My game is still kind of cheap to make. But still the localization is not cheap. And actually uh, in Mortal Glory I think in total I had something like 15,000 words, but my localization was cheaper than with this game. And the simple reason for that is that uh, in this game I'm putting more money on the line to ensure that the quality of the localization is better. While previously I got pretty much all of my translations from Fiverr. While this time I found most of my translators from this site called ProC, which is more populated with professional translators. I did try to do some optimizing with the languages though to save a bit of that budget and the way I did that was that I checked the region sales of Mortal Glory and I mean it's not like exact data I don't know if my game will sell similarly in the countries that Mortal Glory did but that was the only data I had on hand so so yeah I checked which countries did best in Mortal Glory and then I basically decided that okay those countries are my top priority I can spend a bit more money on those translations and then the lower countries on that list those are like less important unfortunately and then I I will try to seek cheaper options for those. But yeah, that's actually pretty much everything I did in the last two weeks. Now I'm just excitedly waiting for the translations to arrive and then I think it will take quite a bit of time to add those to the game and fix any visual issues and things like that that might rise up. But yeah, hey, I hope you like this video and if you did I would really appreciate if you left a like and also a comment for the YouTube algorithm and of course I do like seeing your comments and responding to them so yeah feel free to <laughs> leave your comments below. Alright but hey thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.